In this video, we'll learn how to graph a polynomial using something called a sign chart. Here's an example. We want to sketch the graph of this polynomial. And for this to work, we really need the polynomial to be factored, so it's good that this one is, comes factored for us. If for a different kind of polynomial, we might have to factor it ourselves. So the chart looks a little something like this. The idea is that because the polynomial is factored, we know where the roots of this polynomial are. The roots are at negative 6, because of the factor of x plus 6. The next root is at positive 1, because of the factor of x minus 1. And then the third root is at positive 4, because of the factor of x minus 4. So this polynomial has three roots. So that means that if we're starting to try to graph this function, we know that at the very least, the function is going to go through these three points. Negative 6 comma 0, 1 comma 0, and 4 comma 0 and that those are the only points where the polynomial is going to equal zero. Everywhere else, the polynomial is either going to be positive or negative. And in fact, these are the only places where the polynomial could possibly change from positive to negative. And we'll see how we're going to take advantage of that by making the sign chart. So what we're going to do is in this box, we're going to pick a number, a value of x, that's less than negative 6. And it could be anything, any value of x that's less than negative 6. So perhaps maybe negative 7. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug that value of x into our polynomial. We can do that using our calculator. And when we do, we get something that's around negative 32,000. But the important thing is that what we get is something negative. And what that means is that for all values of x that are less than negative 6, my value of my polynomial is negative. It can't ever be positive anywhere where x is less than negative 6. Because it's negative at this x value, it has to be negative at all of those x values. Because the only place that it could change from positive to negative are at negative 6, 1, and 4. So that means that for every value of x less than negative 6 that we plug into this function, we're going to get a negative y value. So I'm going to graph it going like this, and it's going to go down and down and down to negative infinity. Okay, now what happens at negative 6? Well, it goes through the point negative 6 comma 0. And because the degree here is 2, because that root appears with multiplicity 2, that means that my graph is going to look like y equals x squared there. In other words, it's going to flatten out. So you might notice that when I drew this, I drew the curve flattening out a little bit instead of just drawing it as a straight line. Okay, so now what happens after negative 6? Well, in this next box, what I'm going to write is an x value that's between negative 6 and positive 1. And it could be anything, any value of x between negative 6 and positive 1. So, for example, I could plug in x equals 0. And again, using my calculator, I can plug x equals 0 into this function, substitute it in for all those x's, and figure out what I get. But what I get is some negative number. It's not really important what negative number I get, What's more important is the fact that I get a negative number. And so that means that at this point, negative 6, my function turns back around and it's negative again, but then of course it has to become positive again when it gets to positive 1. Okay, let's do the next section. In this box, we're going to write a number. We're going to write a number that's between 1 and 4. So between 1 and 4, we're going to pick whatever x value we want, our favorite x value, let's say 2. And when we plug that value of x into our function, it turns out that we get a positive answer. And again, it's not really that important what positive number we get. What's important is that we get a positive number. And so that means that my function crosses the x-axis here and goes into positive territory. And then it's going to come back down to hit this point at x equals 4. Now, notice again that I drew this as just crossing through the axis. And that's because this root appears with multiplicity 1. And that means that it looks like y equals x there. It looks like a straight line. Finally, we're going to pick a number that's greater than 4. So again, any value of x greater than 4. So how about 13? Why not? 13 is greater than 4. And it turns out that when I plug 13 into my function, what I get is a negative value. And also, because my root has multiplicity 3, my function looks like y equals x cubed there, which means it's going to level out and then cross through the x-axis and go into negative territory. And it can never leave negative territory. It has to be negative forever and ever and ever, because the only place that this function could possibly change sign is at one of these roots. 
Now keep in mind, it didn't have to change sign at a root. For example, at this root, the function didn't change sign. It could have, but it didn't. But it did change sign at 1 and at 4. But those are the only places where a polynomial function could possibly change from positive to negative or from negative to positive. And so these sign charts are a good way to get a rough picture of what your graph looks like.